Fort Ticonderoga is an 18th century star fort which stands in the narrows near the south end of Lake Champlain in Lake Champlain Valley, along a crossroads of nations and peoples. The name is a corruption of the Iroquois word Tecantaro Ken, meaning it's at the junction of two waterways, fitting as it's located where Lake Champlain and New York's Lake George meet. Native Americans occupied the area for centuries before the French explorer Samuel de Champlain first arrived in 1609 traveling with the Algonquin tribe. Between 1609 and 1754, war between native and European powers found Ticonderoga directly in the path of the fighting. French soldiers of the Carignan Salier Regiment crossed the peninsula in 1666 to strike at the Mohawk, and in 1690 the English and native forces passed through to attack Canada. The fort was built between 1755 and 1757 by Michel Alain Chartier de Lotbiniere, first Marquis de Lotbiniere, who was a Canadian born French military engineer, and he named the fort Fort Carillon. It was built during the Seven Years' War, which began in 1756 and ended in 1763. In the U.S., it is often referred to as the French and Indian War. One of the many criticisms of the fort when it was surveyed by General Montcalm after its completion was its location. A strategic weakness lie in its placement beneath several nearby hills overlooking the fort, which Montcalm felt, and rightly so, made it possible for their enemies to fire down on them from above. He also felt the buildings were too tall, offering a bigger target, and that the masonry was of poor quality. The fort was about 500 feet wide, with a barracks that could hold 400 soldiers, but these were only completed in 1758. Storage space was small, and provisions had to be stored outside the fort's walls. The cistern also was very small, and the water quality poor. The name Carillon is believed to refer to the sounds made by the rapids of the La Chute River, which has a portage where the two lakes meet. This sound was said to resemble the chiming bells of a carillon, a percussion instrument played with a keyboard, which has at least 23 bronze bells in fixed suspension and which is tuned in chromatic order. Generally housed in bell towers, they were mostly owned by churches and universities. In 1757, the French appealed to native nations to aid them in the war against the English. Nearly 2,000 warriors from as far away as the Great Plains answered the call. They assembled at Fort Carillon in August and launched an attack on Fort William Henry, four miles to the south. The attack was successful, but the relationship between the French and the native people suffered due to unfulfilled expectations on both sides. During the 1758 Battle of Carillon, 4,000 French defenders held off an attack by 16,000 British troops in the fields below the fort. But in 1759, the British returned and drove the small French garrison left behind from the fort. Before they left, the French blew up the fort's powder magazine, leaving the British with much work to do to restore the usefulness of the fort. In 1760, Canada surrendered to the British, thus ending the French and Indian War. Until the American Revolution, the fort was manned with a small British detachment. Less than a month after the start of the Revolutionary War, while a small British garrison controlled the fort, it was attacked on May 10, 1775. The Green Mountain Boys and other militia under the command of Ethan Allen and Benedict Arnold captured the fort in a surprise attack. In December, under orders from General George Washington, one Henry Knox arrived at the fort and selected 59 pieces of artillery, which were then hauled 300 miles where they were used in the Siege of Boston, which the British abandoned on March 17, 1776. The Americans held the fort until June 1777, when British forces occupied high ground above it on Mount Defiance, forcing the Continental Army troops to withdraw. The British abandoned the fort not long after when they failed to win control of the Hudson River Valley, and the fort ceased to be of military value after 1781, falling to ruin and being stripped of anything useful left behind by locals. A private family purchased what was left of the fort in 1820, and it became a stop for tourists to the area. Early in the 20th century, the owners restored the fort and a foundation now operates it as a tourist attraction, museum, 
and Research Center. What's your name? What was it? I'm also bad too. What is the name of this place? What is the name of this place? We're back inside. Are you in the encampment outside the fort? So this is a battlefield in the Battle of Carillon or Carillon, not sure how they pronounced it. It's so serene now, absolutely beautiful. Now we have a beautiful idyllic forest, we see the lines there, the trenches, and then some trenches a little, little back further. Anybody here with me on this old battlefield today? Êtes-vous français? What was that? Who are you fighting? Who was the enemy? Who is the enemy? Who were you fighting? Hello, you sound British. Are you a Brit? How did you get here? What's that? How did you get here? Did you come on a ship? Did you come on a ship? Thanks for watching today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Fort Ticonderoga. If you get up to this part of the woods, you should visit. It's got a lot of history, um, great stories, and who knows what still remains here. We'll see you next time.